<clears throat> hello students good morning all of you so today we are going to discuss about the skeletal system so coming to the skeletal system as you can see the skeleton over here the skull we are looking here so this skull is made up of different different bones all the bones that does not have a, a proper shape but every bone of the skull this having different shapes suppose if you just look at this you can identify the flat bone flat surface it is having okay so the my mouse i am keeping over the frontal bone and behind that you can identify two parietal bones so in this way there are different bones are there so coming to the skeleton when you just think about the skeleton the skeleton is two types so one is exoskeleton and endoskeleton as you all know that exo means outside endo means inside the human beings means ourselves the mammals we are having the skeleton inside the body so that is called as endoskeleton okay let us think about let's let us discuss about all the bones once again is coming to the skeletal system okay so bone is essentially a highly vascular living constantly changing mineralized connective tissue so this is what we can define this bone the human skeleton is internal framework of the body and it is composed of around 270 bones at birth this total decreases to 206 bones by adulthood okay so the only we can identify 206 in the adult so the bone mass is the skeleton reaches maximum the density around age of 21 even some bones means the clavicle it completes its ossification at the age of 31 the human skeleton can be divided into axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton let me show you this axial and appendicular skeleton yes here you can identify axial skeleton and appendicular what is meant by axial this yellow color one which you are seeing in the skeleton the skull then vertebral column a ribs here you can identify the sternum so coming to this axial and appendicular skeleton as we are we have been discussing about these two parts of the skeleton so here we can identify in this image we are seeing the skeleton at the midpoint you can identify the skull then you can identify the vertebral column sternum ribs so this part in the midline part the bones which are present at the midline they will come under axial skeleton so the lateral part of this skeleton we can identify it is appendicular skeleton so in the appendicular skeleton we can identify the bones of upper limb and bones of lower limb then coming to this axial skeleton let me show you what are the bones we can identify in the axial skeleton so as i have told you earlier in the axial skeleton first we can identify the skull so in the skull we can identify different bones here we can identify the frontal then below to this frontal at the midline we can identify nasal bones right and left nasal bones below the nasal bones you can identify right and left maxillae then you can identify the zygomatic bones then you can identify so in the orbit the bony sockets orbit it is consisting of different bones at the medial wall of the orbit we can identify the lacrimal bone over here then posterior to the lacrimal bone we can identify the ethmoid bone and most posteriorly we can identify this yellow color bone this is nothing but the sphenoid bone it is only one bone okay so this is this there are different different bones over there they are irregular in shape if we just turn it laterally and we can identify other bones one we can identify prominently parietal bone so right and left parietal bones are there so we are seeing a, a lateral view so we can identify the left sided parietal bone and we can identify left sided temporal bone we can identify then we can identify the mandible which is forming the lower jaw and maxilla which is forming the upper jaw so these are the skull bones we can identify so let me show you all these bones here here in this picture we can identify the frontal nasal lacrimal zygomatic maxilla these are all the names of the skull bones of the skull then coming to this appendicular skeleton so 
let me show you this appendicular skeleton so if we just here we are seeing from the anterior aspect what we can identify are the appendicular bone skeleton coming the upper limb bones and lower limb bones you can identify if we just turn it posteriorly and we can identify the prominently the scapula we can identify and the lower end of the vertebral column which is the sacrum which we can identify over here okay so these are all the bones i just want to show you now now coming to this the vertebral column so in the vertebral column we can identify different regions so in the upper region it is called as cervical region in the cervical region we can identify the seven bones one two three four five six and seven seven bones they will come under cervical region then below to this one you can identify thoracic region it is consisting of 12 bones 12 bones they are present in the uh, thoracic region then lumbar we can identify five bones and below to this one sacrum five bones they fuses with each other and forms one it appears like a one bone below to this sacrum we can identify the coxae the four bones they meets with each other and forms the one bone okay so that is about the vertebral column now we are going to see other bones which are present in the axial skeleton so first we have seen the skull then we are seeing the vertebral column then after that we can identify 12 pairs of ribs 12 pairs of ribs anteriorly they are attaching to the sternum attaching to the sternum by the help of a costal cartilages and posteriorly they are articulating means they are joining with the corresponding vertebras so the 12 pairs of ribs anteriorly they are fusing with the sternum posteriorly they are fusing with the vertebral column then coming to this appendicular skeleton which is attached to the axial skeleton is formed by the shoulder girdle and the pelvic girdle pelvic girdle and the bones of the upper and the lower limbs okay so that is about the axial and the appendicular skeleton then coming to this appendicular skeleton how how this appendicular skeleton bones of upper limb are present so here we are seeing this uh, upper limb bones one is scapula we can identify over here so which is present posterior lateral to the thoracic cage then anterior uh, superiorly we can identify the clavicle so the clavicle and the scapula both are fusing with each other then which is uh, this scapula is going to articulate with the upper end of the humerus so this humerus which will come under the bone of arm bone of arm then in the forearm we can identify two bones laterally we can identify the radius and medially we can identify ulna okay then coming to this uh, in the hand so here we are seeing arm in the arm bone of the arm is humerus bones of the forearm are radius and ulna then rest of the part which is called as hand in the hand we can identify eight carpals in each hand eight carpals in each hand okay so eight carpals are present so eight carpals from lateral to medial coming to this lateral to medial uh, scap uh, scapho scaphoid lunate triquetral and the pisiform bone then in the distal row we can identify trapezium trapezoid capitate and hamate trapezium trapezoid capitate and hamate so these are the eight bones which we can identify in the carpals so in the most of the times in the examination for paramedics paramedical students i'm just uh, stressing on these guys so they ask the bones of the hand so in that we have to enter then we have to write the names uh, in the proximal row and in the distal row in the proximal row scaphoid lunate triquetral and the pisiform then the in the distal row trapezoid trapezium trapezoid capitate and hamid these are the names of the carpals then the five metacarpals are present from lateral to medial first second third fourth and fifth five metacarpals and 14 phalanges are present 14 phalanges which are present in the fingers they are 14 in number okay that is about the appendicular skeleton coming to the lower limb lower limb we can identify one is right and left hip bones right and left hip bones they are anteriorly they are fusing with each other and posteriorly 
this hip bone is fusing with the sacrum his hip bone is fusing with the sacrum or articulating with the sacrum then laterally so strictly speaking uh, inferior lateral it is articulating with the head of the femur head of the femur then the femur is going to articulate with the upper end of the tibia upper end of the tibia so this femur is called as the bone of thigh bone of the thigh so in the thigh bone is also called as the femur yes here you can identify in the leg region below this thigh below this thigh the, below the knee joint this area is called as the leg in the leg region two bones are present one is medially and the one is laterally medial one is a uh, long and a strong one lateral one is uh, comparatively it is thinner than the medial one so the medial one the bone is called as tibia lateral one is called as fibula so medial one is called as tibia lateral one is called as fibula then coming to the foot so in the foot region we can identify seven tarsals are present seven tarsals then five metatarsals so seven means seven tarsals in each foot then uh, five metatarsals in each foot and then 14 phalanges in each foot so seven tarsals seven tarsals they are talus talus navic uh, calcaneum navicular cuboid then cuneiform medial lateral and intermediate cuneiform bones okay remember the names calcaneus talus cuboid navicular then cuneiform bones medial lateral and intermediate cuneiform bones these are the names of the tarsal bones names of tarsals then human skeleton it is performing six major functions one is support movement protection production of blood cells and storage of the minerals and endocrine regulation so what are the support movement and production and then we can identify the skeletal organization the actual number of bones in the human skeleton varies from persons to person sometimes you can identify uh, occasional bones you may identify in the hand occasional bones you may identify in the foot as well in the foot as well okay so that is why sometimes okay we can identify such uh, uh, occasional bones called as pisiform bones you may identify so for convenience the skeleton is divided into axial and appendicular skeleton okay so the divisions so that is these are the divisions of the skeleton axial and the appendicular so in the axial already have discussed about these three skull spine and rib cage appendicular upper limbs lower limbs shoulder girdle and pelvic girdle so then let me show you let me uh, show you the number of skull bones number of skull bones so in the skull how many bones are there so in the skull we can identify the cranium we can identify 22 bones are there 22 bones okay then auditory ossicles auditory ossicles each year we can identify three ossicles are present the names of the ossicles are incus malleus and stapes incus malleus and stapes and the vertebra hyoid bone is one then vertebra 26 bones are there ribs 20, uh, 24 bones sternum one then the number of upper limb we can identify 64 the free bones uh, the lower limb we can identify 62 then all together we can identify 206 bones okay 206 bones so in the cranium in the cranium itself eight bones are there in the face almost 14 bones are there so in the cranium eight bones in the face 14 bones so this is the number of the number of the bones of the cranium face and the neck we can identify hyoid bone and auditory ossicles ear ossicles it's also called as these are the three names of ossicles vertebral column 26 thorax in thorax you can identify one sternum and 24 ribs so these are the names of uh, the cranium so the bones of the cranium we can identify one ethamoid one frontal inferior nasal concave two so the, just take the number take the number okay i will see all the bones in the next class in the next slides okay so let me show you this the ethamoid bone so in the ethamoid bone which we can identify under the frontal bone exactly the midline we can identify the ethamoid bone ethamoid bone then you can identify the frontal bone over here so the, this is the ethamoid bone at the midline then here you can identify the frontal bone then other bones let me show you this this is a womer which we can identify over here this is a womer then we can identify the parietal bones 
right and left parietal bones. Then here you can identify yellow color one is sphenoid bone and this pink color bone is nothing but the temporal and here the blue color one which is uh, which is the occipital bone occipital bone and here you can identify inferior nasal concave it is a separate bone inferior nasal concave and this green color light green color one which is called as the maxillae maxillae and posterior to this one you can identify the palatine bone palatine bone just here you can see clearly this is a lacrimal bone and here is a maxillae then the lower jaw which is contributed by the mandible mandible then here you can see the nasal bones right and left nasal bones and here you can see the occipital bone occipital bone parietal bone and here you can see the palatine bone and here is one as i told you earlier the one sphenoid bone which is present which is extending entire the skull right from right side to the left side which is extending with a butterfly shape or bat shaped bone called as sphenoid bone and here is a temporal bone and here is the vomer bone vomer a thin bone of the body and here you can see the zygomatic bone and coming to the appendicular skeleton already have discussed about these bones it is a number of every bone number of the bones in the appendicular skeleton so according to the shape coming, coming to the classification of the bones the, it is going to divide into different bones according to the shape one is long bones they found in the lips short bones they found in the hands flat bones they found in the skull shoulder blade and sternum irregular bones they found in axial skeleton means the skull the vertebral column they the bones which are present in that axial skeleton they called as irregular bones they will come under irregular bones the pneumatic bones which are found in the skull they have space inside Sesamoid bones they found in the certain tendons. Then let me show you this long bones. The shape itself it is having, it is long in nature. The length is in nature, and then it is having upper end, lower end, and the shaft. Okay, so every bone, long bone, it is having upper end, lower end, and shaft. Then here also I am just showing you all the long bones, long bones. So when you are writing in the examination point of view. You just try to write down according to the shape classification of bones according to the shape long bones you write the name called as humerus radius ulna in the upper limb in the lower limb we can identify the femur tibia and fibula short bones coming to the short bones we can identify them these metacarpals these metacarpals they are very short in nature so they will come under short bones and the carpal bones these are also very small in nature we will we it will come under irregular irregular and short bones so irregular and short bones in the proximal uh, scaphoid lunate triquetral and the pisiform in the distal row trapezium trapezoid capitate and hamate the even tarsals coming to the lower limb in the lower limb we can we can also identify the short bones called as tarsals so here are the tarsal bones they will come under the short bones then flat bones flat bones the scapula scapula and some skull bones they will come under yeah here you can identify the parietal bones frontal bone and occipital also they are flat in nature so they are also come under the flat bones then coming to the diploid the bone marrow of the skull bones is called as the diploid diploid so the diploid which is present between outer table and inner table means outer layer and inner layer so diploid is nothing but a bone marrow of the skull bones then coming to this flat bones other flat bones are sternum and ribs here i am showing you the sternum over here and here you can see the ribs then irregular bones irregular bones they are having different shape so the shape is different so they will come under irregular bones then even hip bones right and left hip bones the bone bony pelvis they will come under the irregular bones then as i told you earlier the pneumatic bones so the pneumatic bones they're having as i told you already it is having spaces inside here you can identify a space here and here in this part also you can identify some space so the bone which we are identifying over here is ethamoid bone and this ethamoid bone it is also having space and here you can identify the frontal bone that frontal bone it is also having space so and here you can see the sphenoid bone it is also having space inside 
so these bones are called as pneumatic bones pneumatic bones and here you can see the maxilla it is also having space inside then sesamoid bone which is present between the tendons here you can identify the patella patella it also it comes under the sesamoid bone and the pisiform bone which is present between the tendons of flexor carpi ulnaris tendons so this pisiform which is a bone of proximal row carpal bone of proximal row, uh, proximal row which is present most medially okay so that it also comes under the sesamoid bone then here i'm just showing you where the patella is present in the knee joint anterior to the knee joint we can identify the patella and here you see the sesamoid bone this is the left sided uh, bones of articular uh, articulated hand of the left sided so we can identify the pisiform bone over here then accessory bones in some skulls some skulls you can identify such as small bones which are present between the sutures they are called as accessory bones so this accessory bone that does not present in all skulls they are occasionally present then heterotropic bones the riders bone in the horse riders this bone it may develop in the horse riders okay so that is the riders bone then coming to the bone development and growth and ossification so the development it is comes under it is two types of development intramembranous and intracartilaginous okay membranous ossification and cartilaginous ossification so part of the skeletal system begins to develop during the sixth week of prenatal development by mesodermal condensations so bones replace existing connective tissue in one of the two ways one is intramembranous bones and endochondral bones so remember intramembranous bones conversion of mesodermal membrane models into the intramembranous ossification so try to understand this membranous bone so if you just touch the uh, head of a child below the two years or below one year we can identify small membrane is present so we can say that we can say that so some skull bones most of the skull bones they are developed from the membrane so when the child reaches to the two years the membrane which you are feeling on the head of the child below two years or below one year that membrane is going to convert into the bone membrane is converting to the bone so that bones are called as intramembranous bones intramembranous bones then endochondral ossification so the mesodermal stage passes through cartilaginous stage by chondrification during second month of intrauterine life so the conversion of hyaline cartilage to bone is called as endochondral ossification so these are most bones of the skeleton is also called as endochondral bones so the long bones long bones short bones they're all forming from the cartilage okay that's why endochondral ossification so here you can identify how this hyaline cartilage is converting into bone hyaline cartilage model i'm showing you here then primary ossification center means below before birth in the pregnancy the bone which you can identify so that bones that part of that particular bone is called as primary ossification center after birth the bony process whatever you see the structures which are forming after birth they will come under secondary ossification center okay so that is about ossification means bone growth so here i'm just showing you the x-ray 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 and the skeleton of the child skeleton of the chain so in the x-ray of the chain you cannot identify any carpals so that the carpals they are formed after birth so they will come under secondary ossification centers so this is about the growth at the epiphyseal stage how this uh, cartilage is converting into the bone okay then you can identify the two layers first layer second layer then you can identify the third layer how the cells cartilage cells they are converting into the bone so these are the things you are going to see in the development okay